Hip hop bang! Black Panther, Wakanda forever. Let's get into it. First up, rest in peace. Chadwick Boseman. You know, it was really sad hearing the news of his passing because you think celebrities are, you know, immortal and you don't think that they can succumb to, you know, normal things such as cancer. What they managed to achieve with the cards that they were dealt, I think was pretty well done. They honored his legacy. It opened up him being sick, you know, really frantic, you know, them not knowing what to do. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And then the funeral scene it was a beautiful tribute to him. And then the Marvel scenes, they rolled and literally dead silence. It was just so powerful the way they, they did it because it was a compilation scenes of Chadwick Boseman in Black Panther. You know? And the little montage in the end, which I'll talk about much later on, was also, you know, it hit deep too. I hope he's in a better place now. Proud of the movie, proud of himself with the legacy that he was able to leave. Not a lot of people can do that. Rest in peace. Now coming out of this movie, I actually felt like the storytelling was quite strong. It told the story that needed to be told at a runtime of two hours and 41 minutes. I think they managed to keep the pacing well and nothing really felt too rushed. Maybe the Queen's death. The cinematography of the film, some of the action sequences, the really slow motion shots, especially with the water and you can see the water droplets. And the CGI of this film was actually, you know, really, really well made, you know, not like some other movies. <clears throat> Thor, love that one. <laughs> now talking about Shuri becoming Black Panther, it took her by the end of the film to actually put the suit on. Yeah, I think it's most fitting for Shuri to, you know, take on that Black Panther role. She was really the main focal point of this movie because the overarching themes of this movie was pretty much how two characters were dealing with such tragic losses. In this case, it was Shuri dealing with the loss of her mother and then Neymar dealing with the loss of his mother. It's about how they both choose to deal with that. That was actually quite an interesting concept. Riri Williams, Ironheart. They introduced her in this film, and I think it was a great introduction. It was really fitting. She was funny, she was cute, she was quirky, and I think it was smart the way they introduced her with the overall plot for her to actually create the technology to find the vibranium, which causes the other tribe to be, you know, awakened and be like, hey, nah, what are the humans doing? You know, Marvel said they're gonna do like a Disney Plus series on her now since they introduced the character, so definitely interesting to see what happens in the future with that. We also have to talk about Neymar, you know, the antagonist, the bad guy. His costume was unique, it was original. I think sometimes with certain villains tend to have like this really like coolness to them. For an example, Venom. I know as a kid, um, I thought he was always much cooler than Spider-Man because they're bad, they're cool, you know? I... <laughs> okay, hear me out. Like I thought maybe his costume could have had that like cool, badassery. Not to say his performance wasn't badass. He had wings on his feet. Look, I, I don't know the comics, but maybe they could have done something different with the wings, made him look a bit more cool, you know, fish. You know, I, yeah, the costume was, you know, he had pointy ears. Maybe they're going for a bit of comic book accuracy. Other than that, I actually liked how they fleshed out his motivation. He views the surface world as a threat to him and his kingdom that he's built. What didn't you like about the movie? Come on, be objective a little bit. All right, fine. I was just really sad that they had to kill off Shuri's mother or the queen because I honestly liked her character a lot. She was strong, she was tough, and she had pretty decent delts. <laughs> you know, she had shoulders, like, she was pretty, you know, strong. <laughs> Genuinely was not expecting her to die. You look at it and you realize in order to serve the overarching plot and the story that they were trying to tell, it's an unfortunate necessity that they needed to do. I do also have to mention, you, you know that scene where Shuri, you know, drinks, gets the Black Panther power. She goes with the ancestors. I honestly genuinely thought they were gonna do some sort of CGI, crazy, you know, it's Marvel, yeah? They could, you know, they got the budget for it, you know, bring Chadwick Boseman to life and us having like a moment to sort of have closure. That's what I was expecting. If it wasn't T'Challa, then at the very least have the mother and have some sort of closure with her. But instead, you know who we got? Michael B. Jordan himself reprised his role as Killmonger. He comes back in the afterlife and it's pretty smart because then you realize, hey, actually, Cherie's dealing with the grief of not only her brother, but her mother in the same movie. That takes a lot of toll of one person. So you realize she has a lot of vengeance. You see, she resembles Killmonger a lot more. But in the end, she realizes, hey, I'm not Killmonger. I don't stand with him, I don't kill, and makes that decision. We have to move on and talk about that 
post credit scene. I mean, post credit scenes are now infamous for having crazy plot twisters, you know, crazy information that we just must talk about. The ending of this film is you had Shuri actually finally having time with the audience to actually mourn and just remember Chadwick Boseman for one final time. It went silent again, no music, just pictures of him. It was beautiful. And then you had Cherie, you know, the actress herself, very powerful, powerful performance. And, you know, we really felt it sitting in the cinema. Bang! Turns out that Charla had a son. Who would have thought that, hey? That looks like is going to be continuing the legacy because it ended with Umbaku. He ended up challenging the throne. It looks like he could potentially be taking over as leader for Wakanda. It just clearly looks like T'Challa Jr., which is his name, will continue on the Black Panther legacy. I think overall, looking back, it was a really enjoyable film. I wasn't disappointed. If anything, you want to know how much I give it? I give it a nine. You know, it was decent. Wasn't the most best of the best philosophical, like, oh my God, couldn't get any better. But it was a, it was a solid movie, you know? A nine's pretty good. Let me know down in the comments, you know? Talk to me, you know? Let's have a conversation. Tell me what you like, tell me what you didn't like. Get engaged, guys. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. And until then, guys, I will see you in the next one. Here, Bombay! Peace.